Hey guys, if you are following this series, I'm sure you understand how to scrape metrics from your applications in detail. In real time, we will have millions of metrics stored in Prometheus time series database. When we have so many metrics, how do we check the metrics that we are interested in? How do we aggregate these metrics to understand how our application is performing? That's our topic for this chapter. In this chapter, let us see what PromQL is and how to query metrics and aggregate them to monitor our services with complete hands-on. So without any further delay, let's get started. We learned that Prometheus stores data in time series database. Whenever data is stored in any database, we need a query language to retrieve the data and perform some aggregations on the data, like SQL for relational databases. In the same way, to query data from our Prometheus time series database, we have a Prometheus query language, in short, PromQL. PromQL helps us to filter metrics and perform some aggregations on these metrics. Also with the same PromQL, we can build cool dashboards in Grafana and we can configure rules for alerting. This PromQL is so simple without any complex syntax. For example, in SQL, if you have a table and want to list down the records, we execute the query select star from table. But in PromQL, if we want to get the metrics of a certain type, all we need to do is just type the metric name. That's it. We get all the metrics of the type. Please note that this is only for analogy. Actual syntax of SQL may vary based on the table definition. The reason I'm comparing PromQL syntax with SQL is that I assume most of you are familiar with SQL because you have studied in your graduation. Okay, now let's try to get this metric from Prometheus UI by typing HTTP underscore server. As Prometheus UI as IntelliSense, we can easily find our metric name. As we type, it will give the suggestions like we get in our code editors. So let's select this count. As we discussed in the previous chapters, this metric represents the total number of HTTP requests processed by our server. As you can see, we have 12 to do get requests and 2 to do post requests. If you look at this metric data, we have the HTTP request metric for all our endpoints. But now I want to get the metrics of only our to do requests. How do I do this? In traditional SQL, we use a where condition for this. In PromQL, also we can filter by labels. To filter, all we need to do is use curly braces and provide the label and value. Let's try this in Prometheus UI. Let's give the curly braces and automatically Prometheus will give the suggestions on the labels of this metric. Or for more easy way, you can click on a label to copy that metric. And let's go here and paste. Now we can see only to do HTTP request metrics. As you can see, we have get and post request of the to do's. We don't have actuator metric because we filtered it out. And if you want to use not equals, all you need to do is use exclamation, enter. As you can see, now we got only actuator, not to do's because we use not equals operator. In SQL, to filter by multiple columns, we use AND condition. In PromQL also, we can give multiple filters with comma separated values. This is like an AND condition, meaning that whichever metric has both these labels and their values matching, the metric will be returned. We can try this in Prometheus UI. Let's change this back to equal and add the new label method is equal to get let's try this as you can see we got the metric that satisfies both these label values if you want to achieve an or condition there is no direct way in PromQL like in SQL however we can use regex to accomplish this for example if you want to retrieve all status codes starting with 2 or 3 or 4 we can use this regex let's go back to Prometheus UI and try this here status is equal to as you can see it gives you a suggestion whether to use equals or regex let's use regex and here we can give the regex expression let's give it as 2 dot dot pipe 3 dot dot 5 4 dot dot that means we get all the metric values whose status code starts with 2 or 3 or 4 let's execute it as you can see we got this metric let's say we want to express a not matching condition in sql we use not like in PromQL, we use this operator for not matching condition. For example, if you want to retrieve all the metrics except 5 series error codes, we can use this expression. This regex pattern matches any code that doesn't start with 5. Let's go to Prometheus UI and here let's give the 5 dot dot execute. 
because this status code is 200 and it matches not rejects we got this metric please go through the prometheus documentation to know what all operators are supported by promql and as these metrics are stored in time series database a timestamp is attached to each metric because of this we can easily retrieve the metrics at a particular time for example if you want to obtain a metric at a specific time we can achieve this in sql with this query in the same way, in PromQL, if we want to obtain a metric at a specific time, we should use add rate of followed by the Unix timestamp. This gives us the HTTP request count at this specific time. We can get the current Unix timestamp in this website. Let's copy this and let's go back to Prometheus UI and get the HTTP count of all the APIs at this specific time. As you can see, we have these values at the moment. And if we want to get the HTTP count 5 minutes ago from the current time, we use offset 5 minutes. As you can see, these all time units are supported by the Prometheus. Let's select the minutes and enter. As you can see, this is the data 5 minutes ago from the current time. It's useful when we want to compare the current value of a metric with its value at a previous point in time, typically to analyze the changes over time. Just that you know, we can write the comments also by hitting the command forward slash and in the next line by hitting the shift enter, you can continue writing the query. And to uncomment, hit the same command forward slash. Let's clear this up. We can also filter the metrics by period. For example, if I want to retrieve the metrics for only last 5 minutes, all we need to do is we should specify the square bracket and in that we should mention the period 5 minutes. Enter. If we scroll towards right, we can see that our metrics are displayed for each scrape. Example, at this time, you can know the what time it is by going to the same website and enter here and convert to the human readable date. That means it's Saturday 24th February 3.52 pm and at this timestamp we have 52. Like this, we can get at each scrape interval what was the data for a period of time. This is equal to this query in SQL. Now that we have learned the basics of PromQL, let's explore how functions work in PromQL. But before diving into functions, let's first understand its data types. In Prometheus, there are three primary data types used to represent metrics and their values. The first one is scalar. Scalars are simple numeric floating point values. For example, if I run this query, I'll get the sum of all HTTP request count which returns a floating point number. This is just a number for us because it doesn't associate with any timestamp because this is an aggregated value. The next one is instant vector which is nothing but a single value at a given timestamp. For example, when I run this, I get a value for that moment. This is an instant vector. Instant vectors are commonly used in PromQL queries to retrieve current metric values or perform instant calculations. And the last one is range vector. Like we have seen couple of minutes ago, when we run this query, we get these values for each timestamp in that period. This is the range vector, which is a list of values, each value associated with a timestamp in the time series. Range vectors are used to select a range of samples back from the current instant. With this data, we can easily calculate rates of change, trends, or performing aggregations over a specified time window. These three data types allow Prometheus to work with time series data effectively and providing the flexibility in querying and analyzing metrics for monitoring and observability purposes. Now you understood what these data types are, let's see how PromQL functions work with these data types. PromQL offers numerous functions to aggregate our data. Let's go through a few of the important functions starting with sum. So when we run this, we get all the metrics related to our to-do API service. Be it get request, be it post request, we get everything because we didn't apply the filter on the method. Now, if we want to determine the total number of requests received to our to-do API service, no matter what status code it is, no matter what method it is, all we need to do is simply sum this metric. Sum. That's it. Enter. As you can see, we got total 14 requests. This is in scalar value as this doesn't associate with any timestamp though it will give you the current number of requests. Now let's say if you want to find out for each endpoint how many requests we received. In general SQL we use group by for this. In PromQL also we can group the metrics with by. 
and we should give on what label we should group by let's give the method enter as you can see we got total 12 get requests and two post requests this way we can group the metrics by a particular label and the next the very important prompt call functions are rate i rate and increase many people get confused about these three let us understand the difference between them with examples starting with rate let's say these are our metrics like at 101 we got 43 requests and at 101 30 seconds we got 90 requests etc please note that this is a counter metrics if you don't know what counter gauge histogram and summary metrics are please watch custom metrics chapter of this series to understand them in detail now this is how rate function looks like this rate function calculates the per second average rate of increase that means the rate of change in the last 5 minutes this is very helpful to know how our request are increasing per second for example to know the traffic to our application let's see how this is calculated here we gave the period as 3 minutes because rate function accepts the range vector as the input and assuming we are calculating at the 10330th second we should take the last 3 minutes matrix now to calculate the rate of change per second we should take the last value and the first value in that time period which is 90 divided by period in seconds because we are calculating the rate of change per second which gives the 0.55 that means our requests are increasing 0.55 per second and let's say if you want to calculate at the 10 4 this is how it looks like and the next function is i rate which is similar to the rate function but instead of taking the last and first data points i rate considers the last and its previous data point this i rate is used when we want to detect the sudden spikes or drops in the request rate by looking at the instant rate of change it provides a more immediate response and useful for detecting sudden changes and the last function is increase sometimes we want to understand the total increase in the number of http request processed by our server for that we use increase function this is calculated as last minus first data point this is particularly useful if you want to know the net change in a counter value over a specific period increase is also similar to the rate but it gives an absolute value increase over the provided window rather than a per second increase These three functions tell us how fast our counter is going up. Let us see them in action. So let's clear this off. These are the request counts of all our APIs. Let's try to filter only to do API request, URI, and method. So for simplicity, now we have the request count of our to do API get request. Now let's try to see how the traffic is coming to this API with these three functions. So let's get the data for last three minutes. as you can see we got the six values because our scraping interval is 30 seconds so in the last 3 minutes it scraped six times so first let us see how the rate function works in this case so in this case it will take the last value which is 12 minus first value which is 12 that is 0 divided by this time stamp minus this time stamp as the numerator is 0 we get the value 0 let's see this rate function enter as you can see zero that means in the last request there is no change in the request now let's try to hit this api enter enter so that means i hit two times let's go back to the prometheus ui and now let's get the request data in the last 3 minutes let's add a panel so we can execute different queries so here if you see we got the 14 requests at this time so now the rate is calculated as 14 minus 12 divided by this minus this so let's go to the top and hit this endpoint as you can see the value is 0.0133 now let's try to hit this again 1 2 3 4 now we hit four times let's go back to the prometheus ui we can see this data in the graph as well so in the last 30 minutes our request were zero but couple of minutes ago we increased our request to generate the real time data let us use this wrk tool if you remember we used this tool in the auto scaling chapter of the kubernetes series to understand how auto scaling works in real time with complete hands on please try to check it out
So here they are making 5 to do get API calls in 5 threads for the duration of 60 seconds. Enter. So as you can see, we hit this API 807 times in the last 1 minute. So let's go back to our Prometheus UI and get this last 3 minutes data. As you can see, at this time it was 275 and at this time it was 658 and at this time it was 830 because it was scraping for every 30 seconds. Now let's see how this rate graph looks like. As you can see, there is a peak traffic at this point. Now let's wait for some time without hitting any API request and see how this graph looks like. Now let's try to hit it again. As we were idle, the graph went down to zero. So this is our per second traffic for our APIs. In the same way, I rate also we can calculate. And this looks little smoother because it compares with the previous value. And also we can get the increase. Increase. So for the increase, this is how the graph looks like. If we go to the table, the value is zero because in the last three minutes, we didn't send any requests. So now let's go back to the Prometheus UI and hit a request and go back to the Prometheus UI and try to execute. As you can see, there is an increase in the traffic because we have hit the API. And finally, I want to explain one more function, how to calculate the quantiles from histograms. For that, let's use this slow API that we used in the last chapter of this series. So I'm hitting this API with a delay of six seconds. As you can see, this took six seconds time. So now let's go back to Prometheus UI and calculate the rate of change for this API. For this, let's get this data for the last 10 minutes. Now let's try to identify the rate. So let's calculate the rate for this. Rate, enter. So this is the rate of change for each bucket. So now let's sum by each bucket less than or equal to, enter. As you can see, for each bucket, this is the data. So now to calculate the quantile on this data, we use histogram quantile function, histogram quantile. So let's find out the 90th percentile, 0 0.9 comma, and let's close the bracket here, enter. As you can see, 90% of the request took less than seven seconds. So with WRK utility, let's hit this API with two seconds delay for two minutes. So we have a 295 request in the last two minutes. Now this value should go down because we have hit most of the request with just two seconds delay. As you can see, 90% of the request took less than two seconds. We can also calculate 99th percentile, which is also similar to this because almost 295 requests took less than two seconds time. Now that we have a good knowledge of PromQL, let us see the Prometheus queries for our fold golden metrics that help us monitor our real time applications. Do you remember what those four golden metrics are? Traffic, error rate, latency and saturation. Traffic is also sometimes called as rate and latency is sometimes called as duration. So rate, error rate and duration combinedly known as red metrics because they start with R, E and D. So I want you to pause this video and try to write PromQL queries based on the knowledge that you have got so far for these metrics. But if you are stuck, these are the PromQL queries for these four golden metrics. This is the prompt kill for the traffic and this is how we get the error rate and this is the query for the latency which we have just seen and this is how we get the saturation. Isn't it cool? That's it for this chapter. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I'll be happy to help you. Stay tuned for more such cool content. My name is Pavanil Tepu and I thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the content, Please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.